What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today's Monday, January 22nd, 2024. The market is open and what we're looking at is the daily charts of the ES on the Thinkorswim platform. So this is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. A new all-time high was put in during this session. I opened a long call broken wing butterfly after looking at the volume profile. So if we take a look at the volume profile, this is what it looks like right now. Last night, after the futures market opened, we had a new all-time high that was created and then price was consolidating for a bit. This is the volume profile right here from Friday's session. If this is your first time looking at a volume profile, I'll just go over some of the basics. This blue area right here is what's referred to as the value area. So this at the bottom is the value area low, and this is the value area high. And then this gold yellow line right here is the point of control for this session. So it's set to every day. So this is the value area for Friday. This would be the value area for Thursday and so forth. This is the value area here for today. And this is the point of control for Friday. If you have no understanding of the value profile, I highly suggest you check out the playlist in which I've created on YouTube, in which I've gone over the essentials in detail, more specifically the point of control right here. These high volume nodes that you see in the back of this profile right here is letting me know that there was a lot of volume that traded at this price here on Friday. So I use that to form my butterfly. This is the risk profile from the butterfly in which I'm currently in. The position is up $154 right now as price is fluctuating a little bit. These contracts expire today. As you guys can see, it is the Monday expiration. I'm in one lot. The structure of this butterfly is broken wing because as you guys can see, this at expiration, I have no risk to the upside. I structured this butterfly by using the volume profile. So I'm going to demonstrate that. Or I'm going to showcase that in a second here. As you guys can see, this slice that's created right here, this 4867 is this level right here, 4867. And it's letting me know if price was to retrace back to that level, my PL will be down $90. This right here is my break even at expiration. Now, the reason I structured a profile with this as the break even to the downside is because if we take a look at the volume profile and I were to draw out a POC right here, you guys can see this coincides with 4867. So that is the 4867, 4867. Whenever I'm structuring out certain butterflies, I will use as many tools or any type of edge that I'm familiar with trading with. I've been demonstrating a lot of gamma exposure in my recent videos, but I want you guys to know that the volume profile is also a tool that I use ever since I've made the videos in that playlist on YouTube. I don't talk that much about volume profile because to me, it's one of the most simplest things to use as a trader. And I think that playlist covered a lot of the basics or a lot of the decisions that I make whenever I'm analyzing the volume profile. So I didn't really want to saturate the YouTube channel with a bunch of volume profile videos, whereas I think it's pretty self-explanatory once you guys check out that playlist. However, I have been requested to do a lot more volume profile videos. So I'm just trying to demonstrate how you can also use it whenever you're trading spreads. Now, I love trading butterflies, as you guys know. I've demonstrated them on a lot of my SPX videos, but you can trade spreads on the futures options also. I don't do it that often because the commissions is much higher whenever you trade futures options. The benefit is I don't have to wait for the market to open to actually enter these positions. So if we take a look again at the volume profile, let's actually take a look at the SPY on the right hand side here. Let me just change this color as you guys know I like to sync it up with the script therefore we know exactly where the level is coming from and what it is so I'm just gonna put this as a VPOC as you guys remember again if you've seen the playlist so there we go so this is our virgin point of control from Friday which has not been retested on top of that this value area high from Friday coincided with the low of day here today. There is a reason this is significant to me here. Also, if we take a look at what is the value area high, I'm just going to draw that level on the chart. We can see that it is 4874. I'm just going to round this up and say 4875. Now, if we take a look at my butterfly, what do you guys think is my max profit for today at this strike? It is 4875. I structured the butterfly right here. So my short strikes 4875 are based on the value area high. So my logic was as the futures market opens last night and I saw the strength that came in, we had a gap up, we had a new all-time high. I opened the position about 25 minutes before midnight. 
my thought process was if price was to retrace to this level, it's likely going to act as some support and price would bounce off of it. However, if price was to break this level or this potential support level, we will come down to the POC. As we can see, there's a lot of high volume nodes in this area. So this is potentially going to be some sort of demand for today. So yes, I can draw out a demand zone about around this area, something which I've done in that playlist. And I've shown you guys how you can draw your demand and supply zones using the value profile. But I can just take a look at the profile and know that this is likely to be a demand zone. There isn't really much of a need. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend you draw out the levels on your charts, you color coordinate it and things like that. But once you've been trading for a while, there's no need to doodle as much on your chart. Personally, again, don't think there's the need to draw all these levels on your charts as the script is doing most of the heavy lifting. At the time in which I opened the trade, my logic being, hey, if we have a demand zone down here, we're at all time highs. So we see bulls are clearly in some sort of control. They're very happy. We keep hitting these all time highs. Bears keep getting taken out. We keep getting these mini short squeezes, if you will, across the board on different symbols. If we take a look at NVIDIA and some of these high beta stocks, there's a lot of strength in the market, obviously, as we're putting in a new all time high. So if price was to retrace, there's going to be some sort of buyers that are going to want to capitalize on this opportunity to either defend their positions from the previous day or there's going to be people that didn't partake in the rally on Friday that's going to be excited to try and buy with the previous buyers with the assumption being they're going to defend this zone and if price breaks down below this zone then they're going to take some sort of a loss. Understanding that logic is just something that's just going to help me pick the strikes for the butterfly. The reason I like the butterfly spread is if I'm going to be trading this, I already have a defined risk and I have a very high probability. If we take a look at the risk profile on option strat, this is it right here. So I opened the trade at 11.36 p.m. You guys can see it's the same profile. One thing that's pretty cool about whenever you're trading uh, futures options, if we take a look at this right here, this is the order as I was submitting it on uh, TOS at 11.35, 11.36. You guys can see if we come back here, it's saying that the max loss is eight hundred and twenty five dollars. That's if the ES was to completely just, you know, full on retrace and sell off and come all the way back down to forty eight fifty, which is, again, not something in which I was expecting. And it has to expire down there, by the way, to hit this max loss. It this video isn't really breaking down what a butterfly is. I just wanted to demonstrate if you already know how to use butterflies, how you can actually trade the ES futures. And if you're trading the ES futures, chances are you're using something like the volume profile. So how you can use these high volume nodes, you can use point of controls, you can trade futures after hours. These are high probability trades in case momentum was to continue to the upside and bulls remained in control all day and the market just kept rallying. I didn't want to have to worry about upside risk. When you trade these futures, options though the spread will say it costs in this case here uh $16.50 .50 was the debit in which it cost if i remember correctly to uh, open the trade but as you guys can see here it's going to say my max loss is about half of that however your max profit is also going to be half of what it's saying that's just something to take note of whenever you trade es options that the price your max loss is always going to be half to my understanding of what the trade actually costs. So if you're buying an option on the ES and it costs $10, it's only going to actually cost you $500 to open the trade, even though it's a $10 option. It, there's a difference between when you trade index or ETF or stock options versus when you trade the futures options at least on Thinkorswim. Thinkorswim is the only platform in which I've ever used to trade futures options. I've traded futures on NinjaTrader, but I've never traded the options on NinjaTrader. I'm not sure if it's possible. So it's just something to be aware of. And this is great for accounts that are below PDT. So if you have an account below PDT, let's just say your account is around $10,000 and you want to trade uh, futures options, a position like this is going to cost 825 bucks to open. Even though the butterfly actually cost over 16 bucks at the time in which I was opening it, this is how much margin is being used. This is also the max loss on the position, but you guys can see here that the commissions is pretty high. So to open this trade, it's going to cost $9 plus the $2.28 on Thinkorswim. At least for what I have with them, everyone's commissions can be different or you can negotiate it differently on your behalf. This right here, actually sorry is the margin that's being used where it says buying power effect that is the margin being used so 962 dollars to open this trade that means if you have a ten thousand dollar account you can actually open up a, a butterfly like this that has high probability you, you can open it anytime that the futures market is trading but again be aware of the commissions because now to close this trade we're essentially looking at about 22 bucks to say i'm just going to round up 22 dollars just to 22 dollars round trip so i'm going to say 11 bucks to open and 11 dollars to close 
$22 in total, which means if I'm looking to make about 150 bucks, we'll say on a trade like this, it's going to cost me $22. Then I'm already only walking away with about 125 bucks. Again, just rounding everything out. That is one of the main reasons why I don't trade futures options, especially with size, because if I was to grab 10 of these, then we're talking about $220 just to open and close the trade, which is pretty high. But that advantage of being able to open the trade after hours is something that's great because I didn't need to wait for the market to open to actually get into an SPF broken wing butterfly in this case here i didn't want to open up a butterfly on friday like this because i didn't know what was going to happen sunday night with the futures market i wanted to see if we gapped up in the futures market yesterday market opens at 6 p.m eastern time the futures market that is if there was strength in the market it was already my plan on friday to get long futures contracts and i wanted a defined risk that wasn't really a position that I'd be too worried about basing the idea around the volume profile. On top of that, you guys can see the high of day here on the SPY on Friday coincided with this volume profile or the value area high right here. So I had a little bit of confluence with Friday's high. We had if the gap was to fill, if the SPY retraced back down here, that would also coincide with where the POC was. We can actually put the POC on the SPY. There we go, I just turned that on and now we can see this is the SPY futures with, this is the SPY on the left, ES on the right with the volume profile turned on. So here is our value area high. We have a POC right here also on the SPY coinciding with the ES. So if price was to come into this area, buyers, the assumption would be would defend this and price would bounce, therefore being good for my butterfly. And if price was to close within these high volume nodes anywhere within this region, then I'm be, then I would be looking at a really nice win. So around 200 to $425. And again, no upside risk. If you guys were unaware of this, I figured I'd do this video. I'll, I'll try to include a little bit more futures options on this YouTube channel. Again, I don't recommend trading them with much size, mostly because of the commissions, but it is amazing to be able to enter these positions uh, after hours, as well as pre-market. If you if there's some sort of a CPI report or something that you want to participate in and you don't want to wait until the market opens, or let's just say the market reacts positively to a CPI report, and then by the time the market opens, if the CPI report is an hour before the market opens. Sometimes by the time the market opens, you would have missed the majority of the move. You can trade the futures just flat out, but being able to trade the futures on options means you can trade spreads. And then as you guys know, if I love spreads. If you trade spreads, then this is a major bonus or advantage here. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below, like it, share it. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll catch you on the next one.